What's your view on the ocean's resources? Well, the ocean for me is life itself. It's where life came from. And in fact, the ocean will survive us. When human beings have been and gone, the ocean will still be there. But what sort of ocean will it be? It may not be the rich ocean that actually gave us life. It may be depleted. I mean, the Mediterranean is a great example of that, that over the last 40 or 50 years, from something that was very rich and very prosperous for people living around there, has now become really empty. Um, I don't want the ocean to be like that. The ocean can be prosperous. I believe the ocean can be prosperous for everybody involved in it. What are the most important things which need to be done to maximize sustainable productivity from the ocean over the next 40 years? My interest and my expertise is in human nature, human performance. Um, all of my work is built around that. So I tend to look at this through the filter of humanity. And I think that in the next 40 years, what we've got to get is awareness and awareness and awareness. And the bigger the awareness, the more people will have choices to change their behavior. And it will be all about, from my point of view, it's all about human behavior. That's what we need to change. Because it's human behavior that's creating most of the problems that we're seeing and we've seen in the last 40 years. And there's been, not only is there a growth in population, but there's an acceleration of the effect human behavior has on the oceans. So I think that's the first thing for me. We've really got to get the awareness out there that we cannot keep behaving in the same way with a, almost a mindlessness towards the oceans. I mean, the, the, the great thing about the oceans and its problem is that this is a very deep unknown territory and all, we, all most people see is the very surface of it. They don't know what's going on below. Now down below are all the riches. But also down below are all the problems and we can hide those problems below the ocean. So I would say awareness is my key to the future. What concerns do you have about the ocean's health for the next 40 years? Well, my ambition is to be around for those 40 years. <laughs> um, but the next 40 years, I mean, if I think about it, I've lived over the last 40 year period, a bit, a bit longer than that, in, and looking at the oceans. I can remember when I was a child and, and going to the ocean side, going to the seaside, and looking now at the differences, even over 30, 40 years, there's been dramatic changes. And one of the biggest changes I see is, is just population. Uh, wilder places being built up, coasts being built up. So I think in the next 40 years, for me, one of the biggest issues is going to be population and the pressure that population will put on the oceans. As we move forward, which demographic should we focus on in order to find new solutions to the ocean's threats? As we move forward into the future, the demographic that for me is the most important are kids. It's a generational thing as far as I'm concerned. And children are the young generation they're forming their values, they're forming their beliefs, they're forming their rules, and they're also forming their behavior. That's where we need to go. We need to get to kids, we need to make them more aware. I mean, I've got examples. I've got a nine-year-old, and at school, any environmental topic, it's instantly taken up, and it instantly goes into his knowledge banks, and he's talking about it because you know he wants to get out there in the world at that age you want to get out you want to experience the world you want to start controlling the world children to me are the future and that's where we need to concentrate effort to build that awareness and what we'll find a generation from now will be much further along our ambition the ocean health index was created by conservation international what is your view about its effectiveness and is it necessary the Ocean Health Index, um, that's been an innovation coming out of Conservation International and the, the team working with it. And we need this. And the reason we need this is because, well, in order to change, in order to transform, um, I use a navigational model. We need, first of all, to know where we are. Now, with the ocean, there's a lot of opinions and there's a lot of data but we don't have any fixed point of where we are at the moment. And so the Ocean Health Index will give us that. Now as we change and transform, whether we get better or we get worse, we need to be able to measure what's happening. We need to measure the progress of our initiatives. We also need to measure what's happening out there in the ocean that we have no control over. So this is a measuring device. 
So if you want to change something, you need to know where you are to start with, you need to know where you're going, and then you need to measure the progress in between. That's what the Ocean Health Index is. What inspires you about Conservation International and its Ocean Health Programme? My experience of Conservation International is that it's an incredible organisation with a big ambition. And that ambition is something that inspires me and inspires everybody I talk to. So that's the first thing, the ambition. Um, the people, the experts they've got, the um, dedication that they have and the commitment they have, but also their ability to actually do things that haven't been done before. That inspires me as well. And then I suppose the third thing about Conservation International is that it takes a almost a nonpartisan view. So where some organizations sort of create um, opposition or enemies, Conservation International sees that there's a place for everybody around the table and that that's where you're going to get the solutions. So it isn't just about science, it isn't just about politics, it's about putting everything together to get a better result and a bigger result for everybody. How can businesses help sustain the marine world? Let's look at business. And to be pragmatic, a business is in existence to grow and to make profit. So it depends on how you define profit and how you define costs. And I think that in the past, all of those costs haven't been factored in. The human costs, the environmental costs. So in terms of how a business can be shaped or encouraged to be more sustainable, it needs to be shown in different ways how actually being sustainable is a smart thing to do from a business point of view. And the best businesses I've seen working on sustainability are doing just that. In fact, it's forcing them, the idea of sustainability, having a sustainability goal within the organization, within the corporation, and communicating that to its shareholders, it's forced them to be more innovative. I mean, one of the reasons that uh, we're not sustainable is we're very wasteful. We're mindless and we're wasteful. So companies that realize that and actually get a grip on that wastefulness, they can get very innovative and find that actually to be sustainable can be a smart thing from a profit point of view, from a shareholder point of view. But there's another element here. And the other element are the human beings that work for that organization. And as their values change and develop and evolve, they put pressure on a company. They don't want to work for companies who are wasteful, non-environmental. And so that adds another uh, element of encouragement or pressure, whatever you want to talk about it, for that company to be sustainable. Then the third element is, we come through with newer generations of people who are actually leading those companies. And so if we can build the awareness into enlightenment, we get a whole new generation of leaders who actually, part of the profit motive is not just profit for shareholders, but actually profit for the world. What's your advice to businesses in their move towards sustainable marine world transformation? I can see very positive steps towards companies getting more sustainable, um, more responsible, and more accountable for their impact on society and on the environment. That's a good sign. I think what we need to do, though, we need to speed that up. We need to look at ways that we can actually get more and more, get a bigger critical mass of organizations into that area. And at the moment, it's done in an independent fashion. This needs to be on every company's agenda, sustainability. What's our impact on society? What's our impact on the environment? And companies need to be judged that way. And so we need some mechanism for being able to connect these companies together so that they can share their ideas, they can share their ambitions, they can help each other, and they can help each other get there faster. What role does the business community play in marine sustainability? My prime motivation in setting my company up was because I'd worked in the business community, the corporate world. And what I saw there is I saw a lot of very creative, very skilled, competent people who were involved in this activity, but actually many of them were unfulfilled in some way. 
And so I set out to create a, a program and a business around that that could make people more effective in their work, but also make them more fulfilled. And so one of the areas I work on is people's consciousness. What level of consciousness are they operating at in business? And I think if I look back, if you look at the world from a historical point of view, uh, there was a time where as far as uh, human beings were concerned, nobody really had a big impact on the world. And then we went through various phases um, where there, there were empires, they still didn't have a big impact on the planet. Um, and then, then there were big military organizations and so on that would sort of uh, have an impact. But we've reached a point now where the biggest impact, I believe, on the planet, for good or for evil, is business. Everybody on the planet is at the effect of business, either a positive effect or a negative effect. So I, but I think the problem is business doesn't have a consciousness that operates at that level of accountability or responsibility. So I think that there needs to be a raising of consciousness within the business community, particularly amongst leaders, first of all, but also amongst employees. And when we get that matching, that the consciousness of business matches the responsibility that it has and the impact it has, then we're going to see a lot of changes. And then business can be switched from something that currently has a negative impact on the environment to something that has a massive positive effect on the environment. Because business is, in fact, the greatest wealth creation system that we've ever developed. 